Shalom, 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 my people. Shalom, God's people. How are you doing today? I hope your Saturday was good and uh, the Spirit of God was Saturday is always hectic, but God has been faithful to us by the grace of God. I want to welcome you back from wherever you're coming from right now. Uh, and I just want to tell you we are still uh, proceeding with the, with the season of Anuka. Praise the name of Jesus. The Feasts of Light. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God it's, it's the Feast of light, Lights by the grace of God. And uh, we are still in the season. So I just want to wish you uh, a happy Anuka by the grace of God. Happy Anuka. I believe so much that God is doing a new thing in our life at this moment. In the season of the Anuka season. I believe so very much that prophetically God is going to speak to somebody tonight and uh, your life is not going to be the same by the grace of God. But before I proceed, I want us to pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, I want to give you the praise and all the duration. Thank you for this Saturday. We are still alive because you decided we be alive. It is not by power nor by mighty. It is by the Spirit of God that we are here and we are still alive. To you alone be the glory as we invite your presence. We invite the Spirit of God. We invite your mercies. We invite your cleansing. We invite the blood of Jesus to speak to us in the name of Jesus. And after we are done, your name shall be glorified. And after we are done, we will surely return all the glory unto you as usual. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. If you hear me, just type the word amen. There are, you know, such things the devil does not want to hear about them. But we just want to bring everything home to you in the name of Jesus. In your sitting room, in your bedroom, in your kitchen, in, a, in, your, in your sitting rooms where you're watching your TVs right now. In the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, while we are in the season of rededication, on the season of Anuka, we told you that in this season, it is a season for us to rededicate ourselves. It was a season when the children of Israel rededicated the temple back to God. And all of us know that the temple in our generation, it is not the building we see. Praise the name of Jesus. The church is not the building. The church is me. And when Jesus is coming to rapture the church, he's not coming to rapture the building. He's coming to rapture me. Praise the name of Jesus. So I want to speak to you prophetically this day that as Jesus comes to rapture the church, may you be found worthy to be raptured in this season, in, in the time, when the time comes, in the name of Jesus. I believe so very much that God is doing a new thing in our midst. Praise the name of Jesus. As usual, I am Prophetess Agnes Emmanuel Avako, by the grace of God, the vision bearer of Iam Ministries International, a daughter of Bishop Paul Chukwem, and Prophetess Miriam Obina, together with my pastor, Pastor Robert Wamala, and Pastor Helen, we want to take this opportunity to welcome you to our broadcast, and we feel so very much that uh, God is doing a new thing in our life, by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Now, in the season of the, in the, season of the Feast of of uh, Anuka or the feast of dedication, rededication in the presence of God. There are things we've got to slay. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. While you are rededicating yourself, when somebody says, I am rededicating myself, that means I was there, but along the way something went wrong. Yes. Rededication is beginning afresh. Yes. You know, going back where we lost it as a church and as the children of God. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, we want to talk about the things, or I call them, I called it the giants we must slay in before we rededicate ourselves. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. There are things that are hindering us. Even when we try to rededicate ourselves, we cannot do it because there are things that are tying us backwardness. Now, what are the things I and you have got to deal with? What are the things that we've got to deal with in the season of Anuka, in this season of rededication? What are the things we've got to take off our way, to get out of our way in order to see the glory of God? Because ladies and gentlemen, as long as these things are still in our lives, we can never see the glory of God. We can never see the presence of God. We can never see the spirit of God. We can never see the manifestation of God in our lives. I believe I'm talking to somebody. 
Now, the things, oh, I named it the giant to be slain before we enter the next level. My theme is entitled Rededication in the season of Anuka. We are still in Anuka season. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, giant number one that everyone is ignoring of late in the body of Christ, and giant number one that people are taking it for granted, and it is eating anointing. It is eating bishops. It is eating prophets. It is eating apostles, the teachers of the word, the pastors, the intercessors, the children of the, the, children of the Lord, the members, the congregants. It is the giant of fornication. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. I believe I'm talking to somebody tonight. Hallelujah. This is one of the giants that is an enemy of anointing. Amen. I was talking to one of my, my girlfriends, one of my friends here in Uganda, a great woman of God, and I was telling her, these two things can never work together. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. These two things are enemies of every each one. Sin is an enemy of anointing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And anointing is an enemy of sin. Yes, and it is something that is eating the church. It is eating the children of God. Nowadays, sleeping is the order of the day. Sin is the order of the day. People believe so very much in their spirits that they can go and sleep around and sin and come back and God, and repent, and God forgives them. And life continues. Sweetheart, life does not continue. Because I told people that sex or sin is a spiritual game. Anytime sin takes place in your life, there is a spiritual virtue that lives your life. Those that have ever heard me preach about the goddess of sex, people think it is all about going to make love and, uh, and you know, do whatever it takes. It is not that, sweetie. It is beyond. So this is what is eating us. These are the giants. As we are rededicating ourselves in the presence of God, these are the things we've got to cry out to God. This is something that you need to carry. You cannot do it alone. You must carry it and run in the presence of God and tell God today, I am tired of sleeping around. I am tired of, of breaking people's homes. I am tired of falling and coming back. I am tired of praying today, tomorrow I am in the sin. These are the things that we've got to put at the altar and cry out to God. Because this is what is eating our anointing. People have sought God with all their lives. People have fasted in the days of the humble beginnings. People have committed themselves in the kingdom of God. People have refused to sign fake deals for this anointing. And now the enemy comes with this, and people call it small sin. It is not small sin. As we are rededicating ourselves as children of God and as the body of Christ, this is a giant we must slay. Because it is, this is a giant that is an enemy of our future. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sex before marriage does not leave your anointing the same. Amen. Meet God and devil, they'll confirm. Sex before marriage does not leave the grace of God the same in your life. If these people that tell you, oh, you can go and uh, sleep around, grace to Jesus sufficient, so uh, Jesus died and everything got finished, you know, even if we sleep around, uh, uh, so Jesus did it all for us, leave it, that's nonsense. That whatever we do our bo with our body will not be accounted to us. Who told you? Which Bible are you reading? Which my by you people reading? Yes, I believe I'm talking to somebody. Amen. Which Bibles are we reading of late? We have gotten to a level we are compromising. Yani to shawacha manjia amungu. We have left the ways of God. We are compromising with our eyes open. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to bring something home in this season of Anuka. That we should remember that after we have slept... We have messed up ourselves. We have messed up the altar of God. We will meet God and give accountability. Yes, we shall meet God. Because this work we are playing inside is not our own. We are just stewards. Hallelujah. Each one of us will give accountability. Even your congregator, you will give accountability of what you have used with your body. Yes. 
I believe I'm talking to somebody. Amen. Where is the fear of God in us? Those days we could not make love before, uh, before marriage. What went wrong with us? Nowadays I hear brothers in church, they say, eh, eh, I cannot take a woman, I've not tested it. What are you testing? Ladies and gentlemen, any man that loves your God and loves the grace of God upon your life can never and they cannot remove your pajama before marriage. When you meet a man is asking you for sex before marriage, is an enemy of your the anointing. Is an enemy of your fame, is an enemy of your progress. Can I talk to somebody? So these are the things we are ignoring. We are taking things for granted. Who am I talking to? Praise the name of Jesus. In the book of uh, Galatians chapter 5, verse number 19 to 21. Galatians chapter 5 and verse 19 to 21. I cannot remember, I cannot forget of that I was quarreling with somebody. Uh, somebody had a huge connection for me. I said, men of God, you don't have fear of queer for God. Somebody had a huge connection for me to go and preach somewhere. But he gave me a condition. I said, sir, which condition? Before I take you to that door, you must give it to me in bed. I said, me, to give it to you. I said, go and sleep with your mother. That's nonsense. Hallelujah. I said, give you what? Ah, things have changed. Even us, we left that to enter with those. We left that to enter in those doors. So we cannot give them for free. You must give me for one week. I said, give you what? What do you want me to give you that you made me keep for you? And the man boldly told me, I want to sleep with you. And this is a bishop. I said, eh, you don't have fear. He said, forget it, forget it. God gave us that thing to enjoy it. I said, you not enjoy my own. Amen. You will not. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. He was even giving me a strategy on how we are going. <laughs> how we are going to do it. You know now you, you are famous. I'm famous. We can travel to another country. I'll, I'll cater for bills and we do it. I said me, I travel. See how sin is very expensive. Me, I travel with you. We go uh, to Mauritius to make love. And we come back because of connection. Any connection that takes you to sleep is not a godly connection. Yes, Any connection that takes you to a place where you, you, you are denying Jesus to be the Lord of Lords, they are no, it's not a godly connection. Yes. I got angry, I quarreled with a man, and I told him, take it, you have never seen me, and I've never seen you. Somebody shout amen wherever you are. In the book of first, Col I mean, um, Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21. Galatians 5, 19 to 21. Mm. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, yes, emulation, mm. wrath, strife, sedition, heresy, Envies, murders, drunkenness, revilings, and such like. Of that which I tell you before, mm. as I have told you in the time past, that they which do such things yes, sir. shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Mm. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. That person was telling me, which world are you, <laughs> Pastor Robert, the guy was saying, which world are you sleeping inside? That is the norm. You want a connection, we make love. I give you a door. You come back, we share it between. <laughs> Double robbery. You want a connection, we sleep first. That's the norm. And when you come back, you get money, we cut it in between. I said, man of God, I will not sleep with you. Now, how many people that are desperate to sit in the plane, and they say, you have said just to sleep, let us do it. And I sit in the plane. How many have done it? Now, these are the giants. That is why of let we are not seeing the move of the Holy Spirit. The works of the Holy Spirit. Healing is no longer there. Sign and wonders is no longer there. People are struggling where there is 
men and women of God. And do you know why? God is there. Servants of God are there. The congregants are there. But God is looking for somebody to release the mantle of feeling. There are a lot of mantles in the realm of the spirit. God is looking for some people that are committed to receive the mantle of this generation. The mantle of sign and wonders. The mantles of healing. I was telling you those days, me, I, I, I did not know about the things of the late Malab Yekubo, but somebody was telling me a story. One of his son is my, we call, uh, is my covenant brother. He was telling me, prophetess, we used to see miracles. People walk, the blind see, the lame walk, and we wash our eyes and say it's not true. And it was reality. Where is that God nowadays? If you are Messiah. I hear you. So as we are rededicating ourselves, let us carry the, we, uh, do you know why I call them giants? They look as if they are small, but they are the ones that are destroying us. Yeah. They look as if they are very small, but they are the ones that are destroying the church. They are destroying anointing. They are destroying our generation. As small, small. They look as if they are small. That's why I call them giants. They look as if they are small, but they are not small. They are destroying us. In the book of First Corinthians, chapter number six, verse nine. First Corinthians, chapter six, and verse nine. Yes, sir. The Bible says, "Know you not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Be not deceived, neither fornicators, no idolaters, no adulterers, no effeminate, no abusers of themselves with all mankind, no thieves." No covetous, no drunkards, no revilers, mm. no extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Corinthians is breaking it down properly. That fornicators will not inherit the kingdom of God. It is breaking it down. The kind of people that will not inherit the kingdom of God. You as an individual have what we call the fear of God. There are things, sweetie, you will not do because you fear God. Don't do things because the group is doing it. Because the day the rapture will come, or the day we will meet him, you not go as a group. Yes. Every one of us will stand before him the way I'm standing. And will tell you, give me accountability of the anointing I gave you. Accountability of love I gave you. Accountability of, of beauty. Some sisters think that their beauty is for sex only. Mm-mm. Some of you are given beauty. God is, God is going to use your beauty to bring men to church. Yes. But some of us have used our figures wrongly. We have used our beauty wrongly. There are things we've done wrongly. Why? Because we have allowed these giants to slay us, to eat us up. Now in the season of Anukasa, we are rededicating the temple. What is the temple? We are not talking about the building. You are the temple. Amen. As we are rededicating ourselves back in the presence of God. We must lay, put the things at the altar and tell God it is through me I have tried. With the men I have tried but I have failed. With the women I have tried but I have failed. Please have, have mercy. Help me to conquer these things. Because ladies and gentlemen, at the end of that day, no one should deceive you with this giant in our lives when we are sleeping around doing things that are not of kingdom of God. No one should deceive you that anointing will stay. Akuna. I believe in you somebody. Amen. The giant should be slain. Go to verse, verse 19. The same scripture. 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 19. Mm. It says, oh. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It is Spirit. a question. Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Yes. Now, when we talk about rededicating the two, when the children of Israel rededicated the temple back to God, praise the name of Jesus. Amen. We are rededicating ourselves back to God as the temple of God. Hallelujah. So the Bible is asking us, are we not aware that our bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit? Yes. It's a question mark. Are you not aware? Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? You cannot carry the Spirit of God with filthiness. Amen. Akuna, meet God and devil, they will confirm. I 
believe I'm talking to somebody. Yes, Who am I talking to tonight? Glory to God. Can I hear you, son? 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 19. What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, mm. which you have of God, and you are not of your own? Yes. For you are brought to the... Above temple. all, is trying to tell us the body we are defiling, because when sin comes, it does not only defile your body, praise the name of Jesus, it even defiles your soul. So he's trying to let you know that what you are playing with, it was bought by, by, it was bought by a heavy price. Jesus bought us with a heavy price. Glory to God. He bought us with a heavy price. That is why in this season, as we are rededicating ourselves, we should remember that we were bought with a price. Amen. Therefore, we must glorify the Lord with our body. Twenty says, that, "Don't you know that you are bought with a with, with a price? Therefore, glorify the Lord in your body Amen. and in your spirit." which are God's. Hallelujah. My body is for the Lord. Your spirit is for the Lord. The Bible says, therefore, let us glorify the Lord with our bodies. Amen. As we are rededicating ourselves in the season of Anuka, the feast of the light, as we are rededicating ourselves, as the temples have been rededicating, rededicated, work on yourself. Go to God. Begin to cry to God. I'm so shocked we are in the head era. We are living an era where, where now men of God are having extramarital marriages. Mm -hmm. Women of God, there are others I know recently married. Eh? A woman is married in another home, but is marrying somewhere secretly. Hmm. That, is how, that is now the state of the church. We are so embarrassed. You know how Muslims are laughing at us? You know how other uh, Catholics are laughing at us? Do you know why other religions are laughing at us? Because they knew we are the light of the world. Yes. But we are behaving like we are not the light. The darkness has entered us. Now we are acting like the children of darkness. We are in the era where people don't care. Which woman cries after they have taken their husbands? They don't give a damn. As long as they, are, they have left the wedlock, they don't care who, whose marriage they break. When the season where prophets are marrying three women, I cannot forget one church I went to in a certain village. We had the Church of King Solomon International Ministries, where men there are allowed to have extramarital affairs. One man is having four women, another one is having six, another one is having three. And, and these women are comfortable, one. When they introduce me, they say, I am the first lady. And the other says, I'm the second. The other says, I'm the third. And I told that man of God, where are you going with this kind of lifestyle? My prophet is King Solomon had abundant women, of, uh, plenty of women. I said, we are not King Solomon. It's true, Can I talk to somebody? Amen. We are in the era. Married men nowadays in church, they don't care. They, don't care. they will fly here and go to Mauritius and do wedding. And they come back. And they are, they are sisters that are too stubborn. Eh? They deliberately choose to break, to be second wives in church. Deliberately choose to get married to a married man. They know they are married. They are brothers who are too stubborn. They know this woman is married, but they will, go, they will marry her. You people don't value anointing. You don't value the Holy Spirit. You don't value your years. You have invested in the kingdom of God. Because with such lifestyle, sweetheart, we cannot have God. We, the, the Spirit of God cannot live with us. Amen. The presence of God cannot live with us because already there's a lot of filthiness. That is why you see, after the Spirit of God has gone, we are now looking for strange powers. Because we want to keep the appearance that God is now still using us. Kumbe God left 20 years ago. 
We are using experience. That's why of late we have turned into liars on the altar. We are prophesying in the name of God. Kumbe, we are prophesying our mind. We are doing fake deliverances to keep the appearance because the spirit of God left. That is why even a midst of a lot of deliverances people do nowadays in church, miracles are not happening. Because people are trying to people are trying to keep what what we call appearance. Because they know ah, people will sense that we are no longer doing this. So you find people have, people have become liars, prophesying lies. God has said he has not said, doing prophetic God has not said, uh, deliverance the God has not said. Can I hear somebody tonight? Amen. Deliverance which is fake, the word which is fake. We no longer preach the will of God. We are preaching to please men. Can I talk to somebody? Amen. When the spirit of God departs, those are the things that happen. Those days when we just got born again, where we were, it was a taboo for a man of God to have two wives. If they catch you, eh? <laughs> it was a taboo for a woman of God to have two husbands. But nowadays it is the norm. I pray for God to have mercy upon the church. Amen. As we are busy rededicating ourselves, what is that you do in secret that you think your wife does not know? What is that you do in secret that you know your husband does not know? You church girl, what do you do in secret in people's marriage? What are we doing? Father, have mercy. Have mercy. Hebrews chapter number 12, verse 16 to 17. We are dealing with giant number one, giant of fornication. Stroke sin. Hebrews 12, in verses 7 to 14. Mm. Hebrews 12, 16 to 17. 16 to 17. Hebrews 12, 16 to 17. Yes, man of God. Lest there be any fornicator or profane person as Esau, who for one morsel of meat sold his birthright. For you knew how that afterward, when he would have inherited the blessing, he was rejected, and he found no place of repentance, though he sought it carefully with tears. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. Fornication takes away our birthright. Can I hear somebody? Yes, it takes away our birthright. As our lost. In fact, they are trying to, the way they are trying to break it down, they are trying to tell us that if Esau sold his ba the birthright because of soup, bean soup, eh? yes, that is how people have sold their destinies. You know, sin, fornication was compared to a, to, to a level of soup. Kwe gamba, shewali wa gesa kwa kutegeza wa nontu obwe nzi. Ewa wa nika chowa nika ganti. Omu ntu ye na ye na ayenda. Oba kole chomo zizo, maso gamu kama uli ya bigambo vino. Baibule gere ganya ne esa wa yatundu wa musika kuruwa supu. Now how many people have lost destinies? And future and anointing of nations. Because of sleeping. Serving God is sacrifice, is commitment, is abandoning some things and focus on the kingdom. If you are sure here, that is what I've always told people. If you know you cannot be single, marry, and marry in the right way. Do everything the right way and settle. Somebody shout, Amen. Amen. Where have you sold your birthright? During the action of sin or fornication, people lose their birthrights. Secondly, it also opens door for rejection. Yes. You cannot sleep around and have favor. Meet God and devil, they will confirm. Amen. You cannot. Can I ask somebody? Amen. You cannot serve God and remain with favor. You know, there's are different favors. There are what we call strange favors from an evil altar. If you are sure here. Amen. 
Giant number two is jealous. As you, uh, we are busy rededicating ourselves, let us also crucify jealous. Amen. The reason why today churches are hating each other, churches are calling each other names, members are fighting each other, men of God are fighting each other, prophets are fighting each other because people are jealous of each other. Yes. And one thing people should come to understand, we can never be in the same level. You see, these fingers are not equal, but each finger here has gotten use. I believe I'm talking to somebody. Amen. Jealous is what is causing church members to, to slay themselves, to fight themselves. The spirit of who killed the brother Cain? Yes. The spirit of Cain is in the church. Why? Because people are jealous. The reason why Cain killed Abel, he was jealous because of the brother. So because of the jealous spirit, churches are breaking. Pastors are laying allegations on each other. Church members are, you know, are fighting each other. Ministers are fighting each other. Because people don't believe that what I cannot do, you can do it. What you cannot do, I can do it. That they will understand that we are not here to compete with each other. We are here to complement each other. The kingdom of God is not all about competition. It is about unit, Amen. working together. Hallelujah. We are here to work together, not to fight each other. So jealousy is the reason why today people are fighting each other. Jealousy is the reason why people are even fasting evil prayers. People are fasting evil for another church to fail. Someone is fasting for one man of God to lose it. And I wonder now, who answers those prayers if they are not evolters? Yes. Someone is fasting for one bishop to fail. Uh -huh. Someone is fasting for another prophetess to lose it. Why? Jealous. Yes. Proverbs 27, verse number 4. Proverbs 27 and verse number 4. Masha Tayara. Amen. The Bible says, wrath is cruel and anger is outrageous. Mm. But who is able to stand before envy? Oh God, the Bible says, I love that. <laughs> I love, I love that verse. The Bible says that what? Proverbs 27 and verse 4. Wrath is cruel. The Bible says that wrath is cruel. And anger is outrageous. Yes, anger is outrageous. But who is able to stand before The envy? Bible says who can stand before an envious man? Jealous is what has caused murder in church. This one does not work with this one. This one does not. The other one thinks, uh, you know, nowadays people have... Uh, a measurements of anointing. There are other people, and I've always told people, you know, we are all prophets in this. There are people, especially the people that fall in the caliber of prophetic. Hallelujah. You can be a prophet in your city where God has given you. Another one can be a prophet in their city which God has given you. So don't stand there tomorrow and say, I'm the prophet of the nation. Mbanu. Stop it. Hallelujah. That is why people are fighting each other. They are trying to keep their appearance that they are the ones that the prophets of the nation, uh -uh. everyone can operate in their caliber of anointing. Amen. Everyone can operate in their caliber of anointing in a different way. Learn to appreciate others. Yes. Learn to seek God in other ministries. Uh -huh. Learn to seek God in other men and women of God. Don't see devil. Everything, hey, that dressing is devil. The way they are dancing is demonic. Hey, the way they are rich, they are going underwater. So you want to tell me God that God, God is not God does not have the power to prosper us as his children? Uh -huh. Why? All those conversations come because people are envious and they are jealous of each other. Amen. Jealous has destroyed the church of God. As we are in the season of Anuka, rededicating ourselves, rededicating the temple which is our body, rededicating it before God. Let us rededicate our heart. Jealous cannot be seen. Someone can celebrate you in your presence. I have seen that several times. Someone can celebrate you in your presence. Behind your back, they pierce you. 
and you hear what they have talked about and you say, my goodness, this person shows me as if they celebrate what I carry. They respect what I'm carrying. Kumbe, what is... In fact, what they portray physically, eh, is not what they are speaking, their mouth is speaking. Someone can celebrate you in your presence, in your obsession, they are the ones that are destroying you. They are destroying your ministry. Why? Because they are envious. They are jealous. I have come to discover, Pastor Robert, we are walking in an era, there are people that have lost their way with God. They have lost their generation. So because they know they cannot get it, whosoever is still keeping his own portion of glory, his own portion of generation, they are now fighting, even you, you should fail. We should lose it, all of us. Don't think the things of us being men of God and women of God in our families. People are happy. They are not happy. There are others, not even their great ancestors that was a priest. Oh. No one was there. Not even in church of Uganda, not even in a Muslim, not even Protestant. In their generation of generation, no, they never had a priest. Till today, the only thing, that they only had, they had evil priests. Now today they see you standing serving God. They know any time you are standing and serving God, your family is preserved. Sorry, excuse me, sorry. Praise the name of Jesus. I believe I'm talking to somebody. Huh? Anytime they know that you are serving God, praise the name of Jesus. Amen. And they see in their lineage there is no priest. That one alone can be a cause of fighting. Come on. They can fight you because in their home they don't have priest. The only person they had was a juju man. An evil priest in one strange evil altar. That one can cause jealous. Because they know what it means to serve God. They know what it means. They know the blessings we get. They know our inheritance as a family. Our inheritance with our children, with our husbands, with our great grand generation. They know what we are going to receive from God. So that one alone can cause people to envy and fight and say, if in our family we didn't have a priest, we shall fight you. Hallelujah. Jealous. The Bible says who can stand before a jealous man. Yes. Genesis chapter 4, verse 1 to 8. Genesis chapter 4 and verse 1 to 8. Mm. The Bible says, And Adam knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bore a king. And she said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Mm. And she again bore his brother Abel. Yes, sir. And Abel was the keeper of sheep. My God. But Cain was the tiller of the ground. Mm. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the fastings of his flock mm. and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But unto Cain and to his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very angry, and his countenance fell. And the Lord said to Cain, Yes, sir. Why art thou angry? Mm. And why is thy countenance fallen? Mm. If thou doest well, shall thou not be accepted? Yes, sir. And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door, and it and unto thee shall be his desire that thou shalt rule over him. Mm. And Cain talked with Abel his brother, ah. and it came to pass when they were in the field. That Cain, Cain talked to the brother in a sweet way because if Cain shown Abel that he was going to take him for murder or he's going to kill him in the garden, Cain wouldn't uh, Abel wouldn't have gone. Yes. But I can imagine how uh, uh, Cain talk to Abel until Abel accepted to go with him. Do you know what jealous has caused us in church? We have murdered men of God. Murdered the prophets of God. Murdered the servants of God. Fellow ministers are murdered because of jealous. They 
us be realistic with ourselves. Let us be true. Omutuva to muagala mulagen to muagala. Okusingo kulago mutun to omusanyu kido muagali that enga to muagala. Pera wa mazima. Because at the end of that day, God searches the heart. Can I hear you, my son? And Cain talked with Abel, his brother. Mm. And it came to pass, when they were in the field, that Cain rose up against Abel, his brother. Do you know nowadays, people are raising up against others. The people that are, are destroying churches today, people that are killing the churches today, they are not Muslims. No, they are not Catholics. People that are destroying the work of God today, they are the anointed ones. The one that Jesus saved with his blood. They're the ones that are destroying his work. And the ones that are abusing the men and women of God. Can I hear you, son? Verse 9. Mm. And the Lord said unto Cain, Where is Abel thy brother? And he said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? Can you imagine, after he has messed up, jealous, jealous is what causes arrogance. People have arrogance, even, even when they are wrong. Where is your brother? Where is Mm. And now thou art cast from the earth, which has opened her mouth to receive thy brother's blood from thy hand. When thou tillest the ground... But what caused Cain to kill the brother? It was jealous. Somebody shout amen wherever you are. Amen. As we are rededicating ourselves, the temple to God, in the season of Anuka, in this season of the Feast of Lights, let us dedicate ourselves. There are things I know you cannot change as you that is watching me. You can't change them, but the Spirit of God can help us to change, to become better, instead of us disgracing ourselves. Praise the name of Jesus. Luke chapter number 6, verse 31. I believe I'm talking to somebody tonight. Don't forget tomorrow, all ministers that are listening, oh, are hearing me tonight, tomorrow, we are having ministers meeting tomorrow morning, Hallelujah. I'm going to start at 9 until 10. Make sure you come on time. Hallelujah. And God is going to bless you. One hour of teaching. Can I hear you, sir? Luke chapter 6 and verses number 31. That what? And as you would that men should do to you, do you also... The Bible says, as you, want, <laughs> as you want men to do to you good, whatever you want men to do to you good, do it to others. Do it to others. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Do it for another person as well. And God is going to bless you. A jealous person can never wish anyone good. All they do is to wish themselves good. As you open Job chapter 5 verse number 2. They wish they are so selfish. A jealous person is selfish. They are not contented. Jealous people are not contented. God has given them something special and unique in their own way. They still want even the one from the hands of the prophet. Eh, eh, I would have been the vision bearer. And she does not deserve it. Jealous people. They are, they, 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 they are selfish. They wish themselves good. In this season, as we are rededicating ourselves in the presence of God, let us break the things out of our lives. And God is going to help us. I believe talking to somebody. Can I hear you, my soul? We are in John chapter 5. Verse number 2. For wrath killed the foolish man, and jealous slain the silly one. Ah. That one, I cannot break it deeper. I love it. That jealous does what? Jealous slays the silly one. 
Jealous is what slays the silly people. Omuntu wa buje chimu tatachimanya. I believe I'm talking to somebody. Tuwe kole mo mulimu. Tugende wa mukama. People are busy there. Oh, God is not doing for us. How can, where will the spirit of God intervene with all this? There are actually, there are a lot of giants that I cannot break down. Somebody shout a better amen. There are a lot of things here. My son, can we handle the giant of greed? The things look as if they are small, small. You know, they look small. But they, they, that's the reason why I call them giants. They look as if they don't matter. They don't exist because greed is in your heart. People cannot see it. Jealousy is in your heart. No one can see it. Fornication, where you sleep, no one knows. These are the things people do small, 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 small. But they are the ones that are extorting. They are the ones that are defiling us, defiling the anointing of God, defiling the spirit of God upon our lives. We are defiled. Now, that's why people call, they, they, they look small, small, but they are, in, in fact, they are really giants Amen. in our lives. In the season of Anuka, let us rededicate ourselves. Carry whatever is eating you to the altar of God and tell God, I am tired. There are things you must get tired of. There are habits you must get tired of if you are to see the Lord. There is a lifestyle you must quit before you see the Lord. You must get tired of some behaviors in order for you to carry the next level. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Greed is another giant. Proverbs chapter 28, verse 25. Proverbs 28 and verse 25. Yes, sir. It says, He that is of a proud heart stirs up strife, mm. but he that putteth his trust in the Lord shall be made fat. Do you know a greedy man is a person that causes division? Anytime there is greed, there is division. Greed is Sigwe Yes, ma'am. Anytime there is greed, there's division. Simani, Buryoma, Mania, Aine Chamlet, Amachachi, Wamba Jakuna Bugaga, Ababivem, Nenga Baba Kazabagamba. Natumazo kubuli denji, natumazo kubeda bachiala, natumazo kufumbirwa, tumazo kuzala aban, tumazo kubeda abani, natumazo kutambula mawanga. Bionna bionanga biwe de baby, ngatui maza tumazo kuchakala munyumba ya mukama, tugenda kusisinka na mukama. Echetu ino kumanya. What am I trying to say? After we have done everything, travel to nations, we have put on designer our clothes. Praise the name of Jesus. We, uh, we, have, uh, we have built wonderful homes. We, are, we have given birth to children. We are mothers now. We are fathers. After we have, you know, gotten everything we've ever wanted in life, at the end of the day, it all, after we are through with everything, we must meet God and give accountability. That is the day everyone should fear. That's why the Bible says, work on your salvation with fear and trembling, because that day coming, and no one is going to escape that day. Either a bishop, a prophet, an apostle, there's no shortcut. And on that day, you not say, eh, eh, I didn't make it because Pastor Robert stood in my way. I did it because prophet has did it. No. Mm -hmm. Accountability will be given for the life. See, some of us, we are alive here. Let me tell you, people that have died, they are not that they are evil. Yes. Some of us, the reason why we are left in this planet Earth, it is assignment. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I, I don't know why I'm talking to the reason why you survived COVID-19, it is not because you are very careful. Uh -uh. It is not the, the ginger and the tanga, the tangawizi or the, the, the garlic we are taking. It's not that. It's not the steaming we are doing. We are preserved in such a time because of the assignment. Amen. Some of you are left in such a time for the assignment. God knows you have an assignment. We are survivors. The assignment on our lives have, have made God to, to keep us 
We are breathing because of assignment. We are surviving because of assignment. We are not the best that we have survived all the death of COVID, the witchcraft. Some of us have gotten arrows, the witchcraft altars that are raised against us, the demonic sacrifices, the COVID and whatever. We have not survived because we pressure very much or because we, we watch altars. Uh -uh. We are surviving because of the assignment. You wake up in the morning eh, and deny yourself assignment. Wekera kumacha. Echa kule sawo chisudo ulabobo na yongera yo. Ono vera mula mwe miyake enakwe zidako. Ovo miyake jidako. Kama eba sve. Fetuwa wadeno mwana. Tuwa wana wana na yemu naku zirieri. Mama spicho, we move to the spicho father and give a Omwana Oh, one of you are in Moranga, we are in Yale. Mukasi wa mani, Omwana Yimba goose bums in the Zikwata van to Aleva Bambu Teba, Valema Neva Tambura. Come up, Fevers. We are two Kayo. Bevana Valiba Tagambua Komu Chachi. Atiba Gambua, Koba Gamba Kodi, Adamu, Gaba Dama Sumba, Fevi said, Ebino Gamma and Gututia. Those were people, I was telling people that, that in our regime those days, there was, there was a girl in, in our regime of training who was very stubborn, but she was a great servant of God. She would stand and worship, and you feel goosebumps. And the people, the blind will see miracles will take place. So these are people that were rebellious. They could not listen to authority. While we are busy submitting, they used to tell us we are worshiping mommy and daddy. Time came, she left the ministry and go. And I was told the story one day that, uh, um, uh, you know, she, by the time she left and, and go, she was a virgin. So she, she got to a place, the friends were telling her the benefits of sleeping. I said, even me, I want to test and feel it. She went there, pew, she got pregnant. The person that is virgin her, pregnant, that one man from Marua, that come one where people sit and put a... Uh, Marwa in the pot and they drink. She got pregnant and she left. Can I talk to somebody? Yes. Along the way, she went and got married uh, to, to our brothers, the Muslims. As soon as she left the ways of God, she left worshipping. She abandoned the reason why she was living. It did not take her long. She got sick for two weeks and kaput, she was gone. What is that that we are called to do? We are surviving because of assignment. That is why in this season, focus on the assignment. Hallelujah. Leave the envious people, the jealous people. That's why in this season, if you know you have ever been there, you have broken a church of God, you have tarnished men of God, you have said whatever is not right before men of God, go before God as we are rededicating ourselves before the Holy Spirit. Repent and make yourself peace and find peace in the presence of God. Greed will always cause division. These are the giants. Why am I calling them the giants? They look as if they don't matter, but they are the ones that are destroying anointings. They look as if they don't matter. They are the ones that are, are causing delays. Prophecies are delaying because you, you're, you're envious. And these things, no one sees them. Your enemy can come and say, <laughs> we believe in you. <laughs> Woman of God, <laughs> your grace has seen us through. Oh, your ministry is such a blessing to our family. <laughs> oh, my husband loves your ministry. Me, I and my children, we love you so much, woman of God. We love you, man of God. But inside, she's doing like this. That's why I'm saying, um, the reason why I'm calling them giants, you are the one that knows. You can pretend before men, but your heart, you know your heart. Deal with yourself in the season of Anoka. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Can I repeat my Proverbs 28, verse 25? I'm Proverbs coming to the closure. Verse 25. Mm. It says in verse 25, He that is of a proud heart, the Bible says, whosoever is of a proud heart, stirs up strife. Stirs, will stir up strife. But he that putteth his trust in the Lord, yes, shall do what? Shall be made fat. Hallelujah. God will make you fat out by releasing blessings, giving you long life, give you good marriage, good children, give you oil, give you connections to nations, 
give you favor, you know, connect you to nations, to big, big people, whatever. Now, he was making your heart fat, not that your heart will be fat like this. Uh -uh. There are blessings that come and make your heart fat. Somebody shout amen. Proverbs chapter 15, 27. Greed. Proverbs 15 and verse 27. Yes, sir. It says, He that is greedy of vain troubles his own house, mm. but he that yet gifts shall live. Whosoever is greedy troubles his own family, troubles his own heart, emotions, financially, spiritually. They are troubled because they want, they, they, they are greed. Greed makes you sleep sleepless nights. You hate even people that are not, for, are not on you. Greed is very bad. So what are those things that you feel as we are rededicating ourselves in the season of Anuka? God should deal with you because of time. You write for me down these verses. Another giant you've got to deal with is envy. Proverbs 14, verse number 30. I told you envy is poison. Hallelujah. Amen. Proverbs 14, 30. Proverbs 24, verse 1 to 2. Nehemiah, chapter 2. I picked it just simple there. I only got verse number 10. St. Balatis and Tobias, the reason why they are fighting, they were fighting Nehemiah's. Yeah? They were envious of ne Nehemiah's because they were rebuilding the temple of God. I believe I'm talking to somebody. Amen. What are those things in your heart? Proverbs 11, 24. Proverbs, Luke 12, 15. Write it down. You see what greed causes. Guard your heart. Read me Luke 12, 15. Man of God. Luke 12 and verse 15. It says, And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. Mm. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of us are greed of fame, success, wealth, food and power, all those things. Proverbs 11, 24, man of God. Proverbs 11 and verse 24. It says, there is he that scatters and yet increases, mm. and there is he that withholds more than is meet, but it tendeth to poverty. Hallelujah. Greed. A greedy man lives a life of lack. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. I believe I'm talking to somebody. Another giant is gossip. Numbers chapter 12, verse 1 to 10. All of us know the story of Miriam and Aaron. Gossip is another giant. Proverbs eleven thirteen. A gossiper will always release a secret to enemy. A gossiper or gossipers reveals, the, the, what they do, they normally reveal secrets to enemies. A gossiper separates the best friends. Proverbs sixteen twenty eight. Proverbs 11, 13. Those are the giants. And these are small, small things. That lugambo, lugambo, small, small lugambo. It is what some of you are not even doing bigger, bigger things. Lugambo, lugambo. You are there. You are stuck. Prayers are not going before God. Prayers are not answered. You are just stuck. One thing, gossip. You gossip what does not matter you. In this season of Anuka, dedicate yourself. Tell God this is my mouth. Is causing me puala. Small, small. If you interview all gambo gambo, baby, baby, turn on turn every. Baby, the dab and to a HZ. James 3 5, verse number 11. We're talking about the tongue. The tongue is a dangerous thing. It's, 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 it's a fire that scatters marriages, businesses, relationships, breaks churches, connections. Read for me that scripture of, of, of James, chapter 3, verse number 5 to 11. James 3, 5 to 11. Even so, the tongue is a little member and puts great things. Behold, how great a matter, a little fire kindled. 
And the tongue is a fire, a world of iniquity. Mm. So is the tongue among our members, mm. that it defileth the whole body, mm. and setteth on fire the course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. Every kind of beast, and of bird, and of serpent, and of things in the sea is Can do what? Can be tamed. But what? In terms of mankind. Yes, but, but the what? The tongue can no man tame. Mm. It is an unruly evil full of deadly poison. It is a, that tongue of yours in your mouth. The Bible is calling it unruly evil. Deadly of what? Full of deadly poison. Full of deadly poison. Someone can crush a ministry with their tongue. Someone can crush men or a man of God, a woman of God with their tongue. It is just a tongue. Things can get spoiled in business, in the government, because of a tongue. Just more because of gossip. In this season, what are we rededicating ourselves for? Are you not tired of the things you have been doing behind the scene? Are you not tired of pretending in the presence of God? Are you not, been, are you not tired of pretending before believers, you man of God and woman of God, you prophet of God, you bishop, archbishop, apostles, teachers of the word, evangelists, worshippers, intercessors. Are we not tired of pretending? Let us be real. Let us go back to God. We dedicate our ministries. We dedicate our, our families, our marriages. Are you not tired, you married man, to have extramarital affairs? You woman that is married, are you not tired of having extra men in your life? Married but searching. Oh God, I don't know who I'm talking to tonight. Another giant is pride. Write down for me Proverbs 11, verse number 2. Write it down. Pride will always open the door of shame and disgrace. Write it down, Proverbs 11, 2. Proverbs 16, verse number 18. Pride goes before a fall or a destruction. And these are the things that, in fact, it is even it, if people don't know that they are pride, they are proud, they have proud. I mean, they have pride. Someone will not know that they are pride, they are proud, sorry. They don't know. It is eating people's more, 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 more. It is inside, but it's eating. Proverbs 28, 25. Proverbs 27, verse number 2. James 4, 6, God opposes the proud. Amen. First John chapter 2, verse number 16. Pride is not the spirit of God. It is the spirit of the world. Amen. Disobedience. All of us know First Samuel chapter 15, 22 to 23. Hallelujah. Disobedience. We have a lot of things anger and bitterness, disunit, falsehood and lies. Proverbs 29, 12, falsehood and lies. Proverbs 30, verse number 5 to 6. Hallelujah. Disunit. Matthew 12, 25 to 26. Titus chapter 3, verse number 9. Hallelujah. What is that that is eating you? That and you are ignoring it. But yet it is consuming your ministry. It is consuming your life. It is, cold. it is making you to, actually, you are wasting your precious time. The season of the Feast of the Lights. That is the Anuka season. As the Jews were busy rededicating, because it was the time when the Jews remembered the cleansing. They were cleansing themselves Amen. and rededicating the temple after it had been defiled by the pagan rulers who had conquered Israel before. What am I trying to bring home? The season of Anukah is a season of repentance. Amen. It is a season of a comeback to God. Amen. It is a season of rededicating ourselves Amen. in this season. Check yourself. And if you are there, you feel that prophetess from my January up to December, I feel I have not been born again. I feel I've been deceiving myself. I feel I've been living a double standard life. And, and now since we had COVID, people are doing things they are saying, and because of COVID, as if COVID, is, COVID, uh, as if COVID came to open for us doors to give us access to misbehave in the presence of God. 
And if you are there, you feel you just want to give your life to Jesus afresh. And you say, Prophetess, I'm just taking a turn around. Repeat these words. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I come before thee. I come. And I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I I'm a sinner. Today, I pray, Today I pray. I remove my name from the book of death. I put it in the book of life. And Satan today, I denounce you with my mouth and accept Jesus Christ again as my personal Savior. I, I am here to rededicate my salvation again in your presence. Forgive me, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Bobango Rie. Echamas Mango Gamba. Okuva January Paka December. Buentun Lema Vega Buent. Obulam Buange. Mtambo debusa, biemba denko la tebiguru miza mukama. Mkose biyomo zizo, kose fujo. Manga, bano rachi tuba ita bana guano. Evi ntunga malala, evi ntungo rugambo, evi ntunge vyo buja, evi ntubingo vyo utagaliza, evi ntubyo kusigo buchai, evi ntubyo bujemu, evi ntubyo malala, evi ntubyo wenzo kujamu mpalo kwe baka. Evi ntubyo vyo mkama feyeba zibwe, evi ntubyo vyo, evi oburi mba, huri na afubu tuka na asale chigambo kumutu. Evi omoyo gwa utabela, omoyo gwa utabela, omoyo gwa omoyo gwa disunit, omoyo gwa busungu nuovu kao, mkama feyeba zibwe. Nga tulimu na kuzino, obinevi na mbade mbio gerako, tubida bangevi tono, obida bangevi tagasa, ah, vina bevi tono. Nemu watu, chau njisebi ntu vino gobi lina, teli abidaba. Jemize jekwe se munda mugwe, teli akulaba. Zena bade mba ganti, omutanisu ga hatani. Mama hatani msuma, mama ante nzerimu chalo vampita mama ya. Paneo tu wadomu kse, kanise tu wadomu kse. Paneo abana vangi vaku wagala no mwami wangi. Na yenge chama zima chayo gera wanalimu kukontolati. Katonda ya kebedo omutima. Bae pregante omutima mulimba. Ania sawolo gute gira yi katonda. Nguwa manyobu la mubo. Nguwa manye ntambula yu jwari tambula mne katonda. Walu wa gamba tina bibu entandi kukwe ni nyasijia biso bula. Okule kukuda mo kule kukubuto. Dama yi gambo vino gamba ayesu. Unakuru walero. Ne wayo jori. Amanya gange. Kajia mchitawe chokufa. Ugateke mchitawe chobu la mwe sitani. Unakuru walero. Nega na makubogo, evi kolo abyo vyo na, ilanga jatula na kamu wakange, nti ndoko se. Ata Yesu Kristo, ya mkama obula mubu wange, mulinya la chitafe, no mwana no mwyo mtuko vitu sabye, na tukwe vazamu Kristo Yesu mna zaresu. Amina, kato zemu no loko ka, muna kusinu, nga, ona kulo no ora anuka, lubeira, abaganda bachita chikujuko cha matala, kama feyeba zibu. Era muna kuzina ba yuda ya ba jukiri damu okulongo saye kari yamu yamu kama no kujiza yon masoga katonda kubanga yeka yari achafu wazaba kulembeze abenzi kiri zenda la bali bata kiri zamu katonda abali ba wamba israel israeli neba 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 ji chafu wazaba katuwe yakoma mungalo ya zawe neba geza kujina zoji tu kuzza ba jize masoga yamu kama. Katna fezi no na kuzaa kwe nenya, na kwe tu kuzaa, na kuzaa buto buja, omuro kuziwa fene, nkola gana ya fene katonda. Tuduko musango, tuduke chibi, let us run from judgment and sin. Let us save our souls, tutasemi oyo jafe. Kwa sima nyibu wa madiri zabiyo no lagawa. Hapa tukatu wa bulo kole balu wa zabu ya wachi ya ebi ya kubatisa. Banyabo neba sebo, e gururi e jeri, li negeye na jeri. Salvation is not a joke. There is hell and heaven. Put it in your head. Meet God and devil, they will confirm it. So you have given your life to Jesus in this season. I pray for God to help you to stand. Father, I pray, whoever has confessed this prayer, in Luganda, in our native language, and also in English, I pray for the ability, for the grace of God, for them to walk with you, for them to serve you. Give them the grace to conquer those things that conquer them. Because not by might nor by power, uh, we can walk the way. But if by the help of the Holy Spirit, we can walk the way when the Spirit of God leads us. The reason why we are falling a prey, because the Spirit of God left us a long time ago, that is why we are falling a prey. When an enemy comes, he finds us available. And if it devours us because the presence of God and the Spirit of God is no longer with us. We pray for you, Father, to have mercy upon us and give us another chance to walk with you, to serve you like never before. I give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' is my name, I be prayed. Amen. Amen. Thank you so very much. God bless you. I cannot wait to hear you guys tomorrow. Uh, after all the ministers will be having 
the I am ministers meeting tomorrow from 9 up to 10 and then from 10 up to up to 2 by the grace of God we're going to have a main service the praise and worship and then the word of God do not miss I cannot wait to see you tomorrow and don't forget we have TikTok tomorrow night God bless you have a wonderful night shalom and may the blood of Jesus speak for you to you for, may the blood of Jesus speak for you and your family in Jesus is my name as usual I'm Prophetess Agnes Emanuel Abako, the grace of God, the vision bearer of our ministries international. Together with my pastors, we want us wish you a wonderful night. Sleep on the feet of Jesus and sleep in the blood of Jesus as we await for you tomorrow. Shalom. Bye-bye.